Welcome back to this week's episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. On this Monday's episode, I'm going to show you how to set up a boa constrictor enclosure from beginning to the end, and we're going to put our friend Franny inside of our new enclosure. Stick around. here is we've got a custom made enclosure and I've got three of these which I've now separated so you can see there's a little bit of space in between if you're gonna make melamine enclosures for sure if you stack them separate them otherwise you're gonna have heat transfer and after all it's not really flammable but it is wood and uh, mitigate any sort of heat transfer that might cause a fire just separate them in between but let's get started so this row right here we've got two or that are the exact same the one in the middle is just six inches shorter this one here two feet tall it's four feet wide and it's a foot and a half deep in hindsight for a boa constrictor a juvenile which is what i've got or a sub adult i'd rather it be two feet deep than one and a half but that's neither here nor there this is what you got to do first things first make sure that you clean the setup make sure you clean whatever enclosure it is that you're making and if you don't have a custom made enclosure and you're more interested in just using a regular glass like exoterra front opening or something like that check out this video right here uh, we did one last week that was for a hog nose but it works with any size enclosure could work for a boa constrictor this guy here it's basically just a box made out of wood we've got a uvb strip on the top there and then we've got just bolted to the ceiling um, which you can't see here and now you can that basically is just a light bulb it's a 50 watt bulb yeah, i used uh, the same sort of fixture that you'd use on, the, on your ceiling like one of those pole things you'd use in your basement that's what I used, and that's what we've got going on in this enclosure. Once you have everything emptied out and it's clean, the next step is to put the substrate in. And what you can do for a boa constrictor is you want something that's going to hold the humidity somewhere between 50 and 70%. BCI, that's what I use for my BCI anyway. Uh, this is a good range to have, and then as long as you have the temperature set up, I imagine that before you do anything, you'd set up the enclosure first, monitor it and make sure that it's the right temperature before you bring your boa constrictor home at all. Or if you have it somewhere else, you'd want to make sure that you have it in that enclosure after you've monitored it for a few weeks or at least a few days. The substrate that I use is called Beyond Peat. This stuff is fantastic. It's a coconut core. That's all it's it. That it's one ingredient, coconut core. That's it. It's the same type of stuff that you'd use uh, EcoWorth. It's the exact same stuff, but because it's Reptile brand, like everything else, you're going to pay more money. And the light bulb, by the way, I should mention, you can get away with not using a uh, light bulb that you're going to pay 15 or 20 bucks for at a reptile store. You can use one of these. This bad boy here, it's a 50 watt halogen bulb. I got it at the dollar store for $2.50 Canadian. So in the States, what's that exchange rate work out to be? 13 cents probably. I'm not quite sure, but it's going to be quite cheap for you to buy no matter where you are. And that's what I use. It does the same thing. And then the UVB, I only have that simply because it looks nice. It adds a little bit to the enclosure. It makes it look nice with the lighting. And it's not really bad for your animal. It's not necessary though. Eco Earth or whatever coconut core you use, if that's what you choose to use, you can use other stuff. Paper towel, for example, or newspaper. But this stuff is pretty simple. It comes in a brick. It's dehydrated. And then you put it into a bucket and then you spray it down with some water. You mix it all up. You let it sit. I put mine in here before I started the video yesterday because I wanted to dry out a bit and I wanted to get to the right temperature, which it now is, so we can put the furnishings in. So step one, put your substrate in. Substrate's in, fantastic, that's step one. Now you wanna make sure that you have the essentials inside the enclosure before you start making it look pretty. The very simplest of all of these things is, well, a hydrometer and a thermometer because if you don't know the right humidity, humidity and temperature, then you're going to be at a loss. I mean, the animal's not going to be happy or healthy or comfortable. It's just not good. So make sure you've got your hydrometer and your thermometer inside of there. Uh, and then we can get on to the next step, which is water and a hide. That's basically it. That's all you really need to make sure that your animal lives. So what I do is I have a big water bowl. It's actually big enough for the animal to get inside of, which is really important because they like to shed. Sometimes I use it as a bathroom, but that's why I make sure that I don't actually have it inside of the enclosure, like glued down or part of the fixtures, because you want to be able to take it out every day or every other day and dump it and refill it. And then a hide is really important too. And with a hide, what you want to do is make it big enough for the animal to get inside of. So what I did here is I've got basically a white bowl that was made, let's call it a picnic bowl. That's what it was at the dollar store. It's just big enough for her to get inside of. 
In hindsight, I wish I would have got it in black because when I used the lighter to make the edges so that they weren't sharp, it made it black, right? So now it looks kind of gross and ugly. So I suggest using something that's black or if you have a nicer way like sanding the part that you cut out because when you cut it out, it's going to be rough plastic. It might hurt your animal. So now you've got your hide on one side and now you've got your water bowl on the other side. I always suggest having two hides. Um, so for this animal here, I've got one that has the hole cut out and the other one doesn't because she can dig inside if she wants to. Um, one's on one side, one's on the other, and then the water I put closest to the end that doesn't have the light because if you have an overhead heat source, it'll evaporate that water, it'll pump up the humidity. So if you need higher humidity, you can do that. But in this enclosure, I'm not gonna need that and I want the water to stay a little bit cooler, kind of on the cool side temperature so she can cool down if she really needs to. Although the temperature in here is perfect for her on both sides. And one thing too, if you have an enclosure that you made yourself that has glass sliding on tracks, you can take it out. Like I don't have glass in here right now, which is kind of perfect because now I can take the glass out and I can just work in here and it's really easy. Um, if you don't have this option, just be careful if it's the glass is on the outside because you might just don't smash it. I've done that before. So now we've got the water bowl, we've got the hides, uh, and then now we want to make sure that she's got somewhere to explore and have the best quality of life. Enrichment of the animals is what I'm trying to describe. And I don't have a ton for her right now. What I want to do is I want I took some bamboo that I bought at the dollar store in six foot lengths. Um, you can see it in this enclosure down here as well. I just tied it up so that it's kind of like a cross and then I leaned it up against the edge or the back of the enclosure so she can climb through it. And I made sure that it was very sturdy so that this snake, which probably, she probably weighs close to eight pounds now, she's pretty big, won't fall through or hurt herself. So now you get some enrichment for the animal. Now what you could do is you could always put a background around it. That looks nice. Um, you can add things like plants, fake plants, or if you had a enclosure that was bioactive, you can use real plants, of course. But I found with snakes, they just trample these things and it's a constant battle. So I didn't do that. I'm gonna add some fake plants. The dollar store was out of the ones I wanted today. So here you go. This is what it looks like at the end. The next step, the final step is putting on the glass. Now, if you have an exoterra enclosure, you literally just close the glass. That's pretty easy. Or if you have a flip down enclosure for PVC, same sort of thing. But for me, I actually made the tracks myself. They're not the most beautiful, but they do work. Um, so I have to put the glass in. So take the track off the top track or the front track, put the glass inside, which I just made sure that we're super clean. I Windex them. And then on the inside of the glass, obviously I didn't use Windex. I just used a vinegar type blend. Uh, so let's go ahead and put those on. I'll show you the final product and then we can put Franny inside of her new home. That's it. That's this week's episode of Wiggins Wigged Reptiles. We've got Franny inside of her enclosure now. She's exploring. We'll show you some footage of uh, that on the way out. But that's it. I want to ask you, do you like these type of how to set up your whatever enclosures? Do you want to do more? What should I teach you how to set up next? Supposing I know how to do that, of course. If you like this video and you haven't already, please hit subscribe. I really appreciate it. And of course, because I do videos every Monday and Thursday, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.